Uh, we're here today with Mick Aoki, coach of the Fighting Irish baseball team. Mick's in his fourth season with the Irish and just recently notched his 300th win uh, as a collegiate coach, a, a real milestone and, and, and one he got early in this season. And the uh, team is about to head off to, uh, to an important weekend in Cary, North Carolina in a tournament we host. So uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you, Mick. Uh, to visit with us today and talk a little bit about Irish baseball, but first we got to talk about your head. <laughs> what happened? Well, ran into a buzzsaw last night. Um, but now we have we had our meet the team dinner last night, and we wanted as a as a team to, to raise some money to try to help find you know help fund research for pediatric cancer. And so we uh, we joined up with the Bald and the Beautiful, which is a student organization. We raised money. Um, and that money that we raise goes to part of it, a, lo a large part of it goes to the St. Baldrick's Foundation, which helps, you know, with research efforts for to knock out pediatric cancer. So as a show of support, we shaved our heads and we raised a little bit of money. And um, I think going into it last night, we had raised, uh, we're right around the $11,000 mark. So oh, we're hoping great. that we keep it open for about another week or so and see if we can't raise a little bit more and, and then send the money off. Now, is this one for all, all for one, everyone in? Everyone is, yeah. Everyone from uh, Russ Dorn, our sports information guy, to Scotty Stansberry, our uh, athletic trainer. Every guy on the team did it. Every coach on the team did it. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're all, all a bunch of cue balls this morning. Well, thank you for the reprieve. <laughs> yeah. My wife, my wife thanks you that the AD, <laughs> that the AD didn't have to be in this. Yeah. Uh, but we're we're really proud of that. That's a great initiative and and great of the team to do. And and uh, we're we're in for the the resized hats. We'll we'll make sure that happens. Yeah, that's right. We'll have that go down about an eighth of a size. Yeah. <laughs> we're a couple of weeks into the season. Yeah. Uh, what what have we learned? Um, I think I think we're going to have a, a a good competitive team. You know, um, we don't have like the really, really high end, the way that we did with Eric and, and Trey last year. But I think our lineup has more length to it than it did. We have a couple of additions to it in Kevin Biggio and, and Robert Youngdahl, who've both gotten off to very good starts and, and playing sort of what we hoped they would be. And, and clearly we hope that that will continue throughout the year. Um, defensively, I think we've been pretty solid. Um, we've been able to sort of play offense, we like to call it, you know, run, bunt, do some different things there. I think we need to shore up the pitching just a little bit. And once we start to kind of guys get to define roles a little bit more and, and guys start to sharpen up a little bit, I, I think we'll be pretty good. Take us through the, uh, the starting staff a little bit. Who's, uh, who are your weekend starters? So we will start this weekend. We'll, we play the defending national champions with UCLA and, and Sean Fitzgerald, who to this point has pitched outstanding, will pitch against them. Um, Nick McCarty will either be in our two spot or our three spot. And right now it looks like Robert Youngdahl will be in that, that sort of either the two or the three hole. Uh, Robert also plays in the outfield for us. And so we'll start with those guys. And then obviously whenever basketball is done and, and Pat rolls back in, we'll kind of get him running and up to speed and we'll have a decision to make as to which guy comes out of the lineup and goes you know in, into that weekend lineup and and goes into the bullpen but right now those three guys have, have pitched really well um, especially Fitz. Fitz has had two really strong outings. So. Yeah I seem to get off to a great start. Uh, you mentioned uh, Pat Connaughton coming back in when, when uh, basketball is over. How do you work him in? What's the process? The, we've taken a little different tack this year than we have in years past. He's thrown basically ever since he's thrown just a little bit ever since we returned to school way back in August and he comes in and maybe throw a bullpen or a long toss or does some flat ground work he might be with us for 20 minutes and then leave you know this time of year um, so the only part that is upcoming that's a little difficult is you know when they start going to the tournament stuff you sort of lose touch with them for a while because for the length that they've traveled but Pat's been good. Pat's been much more, he's taken more ownership of his own development. And so we'll work him in. I would guess that we could probably go with him, you know, two or three innings, his first outing. And then we'll just probably add 15 pitches or an inning to it every, now, every, every time out. And so I would think that by his fourth start, he should be, you know, he should be okay to go 80, 90 pitches. And then from there, I think we're in good shape. Um. I, I would guess that one of the complexities of this season has been preparing for it while living in Siberia. Um, how, how has that impacted your preparation for the season? It, you know, 
I don't, I don't really think that it has, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, we've got the good fortune of having a, a building like Loftus to be able to work out in. We've got our ec hitting building to be able to, for the guys to work. And I mean, each of the years that I've been, each of the previous three years, we have been able to get out onto Labar or, or, or someplace to do a little bit of work. But I don't think that that's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things I never count on being able to go outside right. before anyway. And so um, I, you know, we, we scrimmage over in Loftus. And so that probably the most pivotal part of the game, that sort of pitcher batter confrontation, you know, we get to practice that on a daily basis. So I, I don't, it's been fine outside of the fact that it's hard to walk from our field down to Loftus. <laughs> Those three or 400 yards are a little bit painful. Outside of that, it's been fine. Well, one consequence of it uh, has been it's made the installation of the uh, synthetic field a, a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, we, we knew when we embarked on that that there was a chance we wouldn't, you know, the weather wouldn't cooperate and allow us to get it in in time. So, so you're going to spend a little bit of this season uh, being being nomadic with your home games, right? Yeah, we'll be like the traveling Wilburys, you know. So we'll uh, we'll play some games at the Cove. We'll play some games over in Gary at the U.S. Steel Yard, and um, if it you know continues to extend, we'll we'll use uh, Chicago State a little bit. They've got actually a new synthetic field that they put in, and if we really extends, you know, there might be a game that we'll go up to. Um, go up to Kalamazoo and play, but you know, we'll just go out and play. I think part of it is an opportunity to maybe have, you know, certainly with Gary and Chicago State, a, obviously a very large and, and um, alumni base that's out there that maybe comes out to get us, watch us play. So, and, and Gary is a independent league franchise that seems to really put some fannies in seats, so maybe we can get to play in, in, you know, in, a, in a fairly full house on those nights. Yeah, that'd be great. You mentioned the tournament and carry this weekend, uh, our tournament, yep. right? That we go off-site with. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that how that came to be and and, and what your approach to it is. Well, we have you know another sort of calling on that Notre Dame connection with Brant Ust having uh, been working there, and and I kind of approached Brant about a place where we could go down and 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 play on a fairly consistent basis year in and year out. And he and I just started conversing back and forth. It first started as us just going down and playing a, a series against Hofstra uh, two years ago. And last year we had the first edition of the tournament, which I thought went really, really well. And just purely really by happenstance, we ended up UCLA and NC State agreeing to come and play in the tournament. They happened to have played each other in, in, in Omaha last year, and UCLA happens to, to win the whole thing. And so now we've got I think a, a pretty darn loaded field. You know, we've got Michigan to add to it, and obviously the, the you know the rivalry between Notre Dame and Michigan. We've got Appalachian State, who probably not not a lot of people are really familiar with, but has been a power in the Southern Conference for the last three or four years. And then we've got Youngstown State that's in it. So uh, we're excited about it, and we have uh, UCLA an opportunity to maybe get back on the winning side. We lost a one-run extra inning affair to them last year, so right. hopefully we can get on the right side of that. Um, and we'll play Michigan, we'll play Youngstown State, and we'll play App State. We don't play NC State because we open with them for our first ACC weekend the, the week following, but um, we're excited about this tournament. And speaking of starting the ACC season, the, the, the week after, uh, what, uh, how does the, what, how does the conference schedule work for us? and? Uh, what what are the challenges it presents? The challenge, the big challenge is that they have really good teams in the ACC. Um, you know, I mean, you look at Virginia, they're the number one team in the country right now. Florida State's at two. I think NC State's at six. Uh, you've got Miami that's ranked, Clemson that's ranked. So you're, I mean, you're looking at some really good teams from week to week. Um, and the immediate is opening up a guy against a guy named Carlos Rodon, who's the consensus pick right now to be the first pick in the draft in June, um, but it's, you know, w each year we'll probably play our first two series, ACC series of the year on the road, um, and then we'll come back and get to play here. But I think just the level of competition, the venues in which we'll play, the teams against whom we'll play with the tradition that they have, it's kind of playing a who's who of college baseball. So I'm excited for our student athletes. I think that we've already received a bump from it in our recruiting. And so, I'm thrilled to be in the ACC. Well, I think it is exciting for the program. 
we're thrilled to get the synthetic field in, so uh, we think we think that'll help us as well, of course. But especially appreciate your leadership of the program, and, and best of luck this year. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.